Good morning, everybody. Glad to see you here in God's house this morning at First Baptist Church. If uh, you're a guest among us, uh, we'd invite you to fill out the little card that's in the pew rack in front of you. Uh, it says something like guest or visitor or something. It's got a name tag at the top of it. Feel free to put that on, too, if you'd like. But fill that out, drop it in the offering plate, and that'll help us connect with you and know uh, if there's any way we can be present with you uh, in the days to come. Inside your order of service, on the inside panel, you'll see a list of upcoming church events. Um, we had a good deacons meeting this morning. All systems are go there. You'll notice that we have a finance committee meeting at 5.30 on Tuesday evening, and that we're having meatloaf with all the fixins. I asked Tina what kind of fixins they were, and she said, does it matter? <laughs> uh, and I said, good point. Uh, so we're having meatloaf with all the fixins on Wednesday night. Please take note of the message that's in the box there um, about calling the church office and letting Tina know if you're going to come and eat. Uh, that helps take some of the workload off of her if you call and make a reservation. It also ensures that there'll be food for you when you show up. Uh, the, both of those things are good in my book. So please uh, make every effort to call and make your reservation. You'll notice that we also have a business meeting that night and then uh, messy art night at my house with Christy for all the children and youth. Um, Christy may even take some adults for messy art night. You know, it, the yard recovers over the course of the next two weeks from that event. It basically grows out of the color. But anyway, that's what's going on uh, this coming week. Uh, and then next Sunday, I'll announce that the devotion at the nursing home is happening at 9.15, so don't miss that. On the back, you'll see a paragraph that we wrote, and this paragraph tells you a little bit about the group that's coming to stay with us. Believe it or not, next weekend is when they arrive. They'll be here, and it tells you a little bit about what they're doing and what they're up to while they're here. So um, turn aside when you get a chance and check out that paragraph. Uh, in particular, the bottom line, pray for them as they come. They'll be coming to learn, they'll be coming to serve, and, uh, and their, your prayers will help them as they uh, arrive in Middlesboro and stay with us. Today is a... Um, is an ordinary Sunday with extraordinary music, is what I've been told. Uh, somebody over here in this section is singing today. Mark, uh, Dana, and Drew. Whichever ones of you are Mark, Dana, and Drew. Ah, there they are, right there. They're going to be singing today. This is Margaret Slusher's family. Uh, all of them, I guess. And you see Ike is sitting right in the middle. Uh, as it should be, Ike. That's, that's how it works. Mark and Dana and Drew are the Davies family that's listed in your order of service, and they come this morning bringing the gift of song. So, in just a few moments, we'll hear that. But first, let's stand and shake hands with one another.
and stormy banks I stand and cast a wishful eye to Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land, I am bound for the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land, promised land. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet have trod? With its crystal tide forever flowing from the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. Throne of God. Go. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, going to lay down my burden. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, riverside, going to lay down my burden. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, going to lay down my burden. Down by the riverside, down by the Riverside, flowing from the throne of God, throne of God, I'm bound for the promised land, promised land, down by the river Christians join to sing our hymn of praise number 306 as we stand together and sing our praises.
God, you've created us and you care for us. Today we enter your sanctuary with thanksgiving for these moments that we can slow down and listen for your voice. Create in us a spirit that draws us toward you and toward our brothers and sisters. Give us a gentle spirit, a bold spirit, a deep perceptive spirit. Clear our minds and open our hearts and accept the praise we bring. Amen. Will you join me in your bulletin, your litany of invitation and confession as we read together? Come, all who are troubled and weary. You know the pain of the world's people. As we gather, we affirm God's presence and seek to know as we are known. The God of hosts is with us. The God of our ancestors hears and leads us. We desire to hear God's voice and to accept God's leading. But we admit that the noise of the world and the noise in our hearts often prevents our hearing. We ask God's help and forgiveness. Sisters and brothers, because God is God, our hearing, nor our lack of hearing, prevents God from speaking and leading. We are forgiven and invited to follow. Let us lift our voices in thanks and praise to God. The psalmist offers a song of thanksgiving and speaks eloquently of the impact of living with gratitude. A reading from the book of Psalms. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing for joy. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. In old age, they will still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Here ends the first lesson. And now let us pause, take a deep breath, and be ready to say our prayers.
God, some Sunday mornings, the music carries us. Some Sunday mornings, we lean into the music, and it speaks to our hearts. Today feels like one of those Sunday mornings, and we are grateful for that. We are grateful for the gift of music that you have given each of us, that you have given our church. God, we're focusing on the Psalms these next several Sundays, and they too are music, and they are prayers. Help us to attend to the Psalms, their music, and their petitions, that we might learn something, that we might grow our lives through the voices of those who have prayed before us. And speaking of those who have prayed before us, O oh God, we ask that you teach us to pray. Teach us to pray as the disciples before us were taught to pray by Jesus. As we join our voices together and boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. down for children's time. Well, good morning. How are you today? Good? I got some fun things to show you today. Okay. See these little tiny seeds right here? These are mustard seeds. And they're the smallest seed that there is on earth. But yet, when you plant one of these seeds, it grows into a very, very large plant in the garden. As a matter of fact, it grows about 10 feet tall, big enough for birds to nest in it. How do you think a little tiny seed like that could grow such a big old plant? It's a miracle, isn't it? But today's thought is that great things start and grow from little things. And you kids started off very small also. You know, you started off with a one cell so small that you can't even see it. And then you were two cells, and then you were four, and eight, and now you've grown into these beautiful young ladies that you are. Kind of amazing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, how does that relate to the kingdom of God, do you think? You know, um, when Jesus started his ministry, he didn't have any followers, did he? until he started gathering his disciples. He saw Peter and Andrew fishing, and he went up to them and said, follow me. And they just stopped everything they were doing, didn't ask any questions like, where are we going? And they followed him. 
And then he asked James and John the same thing, and they followed him. And he kept doing that till he had all of his disciples put together, 12 of them, right? 12 disciples. So from such a small beginning, God's kingdom has grown, and it's grown until it's spread all over the, all over the earth. So anybody that follows Jesus is, is a member or a part of God's kingdom. You and I are part of God's kingdom. And our job, you think uh, you know what our job is being a, a member of God's community? It's to tell other people about Jesus, okay? And when we do that, we're growing the kingdom of God, aren't we? Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, I brought you guys a great big red, juicy, red, delicious apple. Here. Here. And then I brought some apple seeds. This morning I cut one of those apples in two, and I found some seeds in it. There's five little seeds like this in an apple. And if you plant this and an apple tree matures, it can produce about 300 apples every year. And the nice thing about that is it can produce apples for 50 years. So in your head, real quick, how many, is, how many apples is that <laughs> that, a, that an apple tree can produce in its lifetime? Got it? <laughs> well, if you, if you multiply 50 times 300, um, now I don't do math the way you guys do anymore, but it's, if, you, if you multiply three times five, it's 15, and then there's three zeros, right? So that's 15,000 apples that one tree can produce in its lifetime. Well, the thing is, I've got five seeds here. So if we take one apple, guess how many apples five trees could produce? 75,000. And that's a lot just from one apple. So that's why when you go to Kroger's, there's a lot of apples laying there. <laughs> All right. Let's have a little prayer, okay? God, thank you for these children for they are a part of your kingdom. Help them to grow and mature so that they are your finest followers. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus shares two parables, each of which point to the character and ethos of the kingdom of God. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, and once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Here ends the gospel lesson. 
Our hymn of stewardship today is a gospel hymn that we love. Count your blessings, and it's an insert in your bulletin. If you'll take that as we stand and sing together. Let us pray. God, teach us to be loyal stewards and faithful stewards, remembering why we are here on earth. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
When I ask in faith believing, I can know He hears my cry. I can rest assured each question, He will faithfully reply. And He will give a calm assurance as I seek Him day to day. He's led me this far and not failed me. In his hands he'll keep me safe. I'll trust you, Lord, with all my heart. Each step I take, I will trust you all my ways. Will acknowledge you as Lord. Though I may not understand. God's holy word, it lights my way, it turns my darkness into day, it gives me hope when it seems all hope is gone, and when I seek his hidden treasure, the knowledge of the Lord, his perfect wisdom, his pleasant to my soul. step I take, I will trust you all my ways, will acknowledge you as Lord, though I may not understand the purpose of your plan, I will trust you. Some days the music carries you, doesn't it? Amen. This morning, I'm going to continue my sermon series uh, that I have called Voices of the People. I will continue that by looking at Psalm 92, which is the psalm that we read this morning and is the psalm that the lectionary prescribes for this particular Sunday. Uh, so Psalm 92. And along with Psalm 92, if you caught it in there, Count Your Blessings was the hymn that Beth and I picked out, and we thought, maybe it'll fit, maybe it won't, but we're going to try it, because it's an old favorite, as it is. The psalmist begins with a simple and straightforward phrase. The psalmist says, it is good, it is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing praises to your name, O Most High. It is good to give thanks, says the psalmist. 
Now, I don't know about you, but growing up, uh, one of the things that Dad was adamant about was that Jeremy and I would thank people. This was a, uh, you know, there were ten commandments in the Old Testament. This was number 11. Anytime you went anywhere, anytime somebody gave you something or said something nice to you, you said, thank you. That's what you did. And Dad drilled this into our heads. In fact, I remember some Christmases at Memo Ruby's house that we would, uh, we would get this gift. And Dad would look across the room. Thank you, Uncle Kathy. <laughs> That's what we did. Or we'd open this gift. And Dad would go, thank you, Aunt Jane. Uncle Kathy, I said that, didn't I? You all were gracious about it. You didn't even laugh. Uh, it would be Aunt Kathy. I don't have an uncle named Kathy. Um, but I do have an aunt named Jane. Uh, man, you all were gracious with that. Usually, Bill Birchfield's on the floor by that moment. <laughs> so, anyway, that's how it went. Nonetheless, whether I have an uncle named Kathy or not, we thanked Uncle Kathy either way. That was the rule, you know. And we would sometimes get to the car, and Dad would say, as we were getting into the car, he would say, now, did you thank everybody for all the gifts you gave? Well, let's see. There was Uncle Kathy, I mean Aunt Kathy, and there was, and there, I think so. All right, well, you can get in the car now. Dad was adamant about giving thanks to people. For food, for hospitality, for gifts, it didn't really matter what it was. Dad said, say thank you, Zach, Jeremy. It doesn't cost you a thing to say thank you, but it means a lot to the person that you say thank you to. Now, if you grew up like me, except for that one part, then you were raised to say thank you to people. My hunch is that many of you were. Which brings me to reflection on my experience yesterday at Extreme Build, my experience in McCreary County. Yesterday, uh, Kevin Barnett and Eric Martin and Christy all loaded into the new church van, which handles like a Cadillac, right, Kevin? Yeah. We won't tell you how fast he was going on I-75, <laughs> but it handles well. Loaded in with a group of youth and drove over to McCreary County. Extreme Build was happening. For those of you that don't know what Extreme Build is, think Habitat for Humanity. It's a building of a house for somebody that needs a home, but we do it through our Kentucky Baptist Fellowship affiliation. Anyway, they drove over, and I followed them in my car. I had to follow them in the car because there wasn't room for me and the pounding stuff that you all donated in the van. So I had a trunk full of whatever those boxes were full of. And Trish told me that the kitchen was full when she left it, so you did well there. But anyway, we went over to McCreary County. We saw the house. We did some baseboard uh, edging. We hung mini blinds. We cleaned the floors. Uh, we cleaned the windows. We planted flowers in the front yard to make the house a home. And then comes the end part, the end part. Every time we do Extreme Build, and this will have been the 10th year, the 10th house, and the number I heard was 1.5 million dollars invested into McCreary County. You can be proud of that, by the way. Proud of that. But when we get to the end, they put a row of chairs across the front porch. A row of chairs, and, and different people sit in the chairs, and the family sits up there that's receiving the house. Now, I've only been twice, but Gratitude is the day, is the name of the day when this happens. The mother sitting there, her kids are sitting off to the side on the, in the yard somewhere, 
and the first person gets up and says a few words about Extreme Build and what it is and talks about the ten houses that have been built. And the second person gets up and he doesn't say much, but he's got the keys. The keys to the house, the keys to the shed in the backyard, and they're your keys, Tasha. They're the keys for your family in your new home. The next person gets up and she has three Bibles in her hand. She pulls the top one off and says this one, and I'm sorry I've forgotten the children's names. Say it. Lucas and Gracie. Lucas and Gracie, a boy and a girl. And uh, she pulls the first Bible off and says this one's for Lucas. It's an adventure Bible. Well, Lucas is excited. And then she pulls the next one off and she says this one is for Gracie. And this is a Veggie Tales Bible. Now, Gracie's really excited. And then she pulls the bottom one off and she says, And this lavender one, Gracie, is for your mom. But because it's this pretty lavender, she might share it with you if you ask real nice. Well, the Bibles are given out. The person that has the Bible sits down. And Gracie takes off across the yard, up onto the porch, to grab her Veggie Tales Bible from her mom. Gratitude. Then, the next person gets up. It's a little bit of pomp and circumstance, but when you build a house in ten days, you need that. So, the next person gets up, which, by the way, is Andrea Enzer, and with Suzanne Lee gets up and they're holding a mailbox. The mailbox has been painted with flowers on one side and their last name on the other, and on the door it has a road number. And Andrea says to the family, here's your mailbox. Your mailbox makes this an official home. Your mailbox means that you live in a place now. This place, here is your mailbox. Tasha wept through the whole ceremony. Tasha was so grateful for what had been done. Now, that's a pretty good story, but it's not my favorite part of the story. My favorite part of that story is what happened somewhere in the middle when Kentucky Baptist Fellowship staffer Laura Barclay stood up and said a few words. Tasha's, Tasha has tears, tears of gratitude, and Laura gets up and she turns at the microphone and she says, Tasha, thank you. She said, thank you for inviting us here. Thank you for giving us an excuse to be God's people. Thank you for giving us an excuse to be together this week. I was blown away by that. I was stopped in my tracks by that reversal. Laura, who had the money, the privilege, the people thanking Tasha for letting us build the house for her. Gratitude is an interesting animal, isn't it? I was strangely moved by this. And Laura stood up and she said this. And in that moment, Tasha became an equal. Tasha wasn't just a working poor person anymore. Tasha wasn't just a single mother to two kids. I think she's a single mother, right? Tasha was Tasha who extended us gratitude and who we shared gratitude with. I thought that was amazing. I thought that was really something, to see the power dynamic of the do-gooders, which we are, 
the haves saying thank you to the have-nots. I learned something from Laura. I'm not even sure what it is yet, but it's still working on me. And lest you miss the chance to let it work on you, I wanted to name it this morning. Somehow, Tasha became our equal in that moment. The psalmist writes, It is good, it is good to give thanks to the Lord to sing praises to your name, O Most High. It is good to give thanks. Those words were very likely a song sung in ancient Jewish congregations and early Christian worship services on the Sabbath, as that psalm says above it in the text. It is good to give thanks a congregation would sing together. Now, the rest of the sermon is about the cynical age we live in. This cynical era is consuming. People, especially people my age, especially people in my generation, are cynical and suspicious about just about everything. It could be government, it could be economists, scientists, or even churches and charities. We live in a cynical era, an era where optimism seems to have died out many, many years ago. Trust in the system seems to have died out many, many years ago, maybe even a half century or more ago. Given all that, Beth and I sat down to do worship planning, and we picked Count Your Blessings. Count Your Blessings is an old hymn. We had to go to the old Baptist hymnal to get it. It wasn't even in Celebrating Grace. It's an old hymn. It was written before the Great Depression. It was written before World War II, before Korea and Vietnam, before Al-Qaeda, before ISIS. Count your blessings. It was written in an age where even if the realities weren't really simpler, we believed they were. We were more optimistic. We were more idealistic when that hymn was written. And I thought it was important to sing it today. To sing it on a day when we talk about gratitude. Can words like those words speak to us today? You know, words like count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Can words like that, written before the Great Depression, in an age of optimistic, progressive ideas, speak to us today? I'll admit that I wasn't quite sure about that earlier this week. I think Beth saw that in my eyes when I said, I think we should sing Count Your Blessings. (laughs) And she was kind of like, okay, (laughs) okay. Um, I wasn't sure that words like that could speak today. Even hearing in my memory those words in my grandmother's voice didn't quite make me sure that we could hear those words today. Cynicism, I guess. I'm guilty like the next 30-something-year-old. Cynicism that say it can't be that easy. It can't be that simple, can it? These are modern, anxious times, not simple times. But yesterday, I saw a woman receive keys to a new house. Yesterday, I saw a little boy and a little girl receive Bibles. And yesterday, I saw somebody that helped provide it. Thank them for the privilege of being a part of their lives. I saw all that yesterday. 
Thank you for giving us the gift of working here, Laura said, so that you and your family have a place to live as God would want it. Hmm. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Last night, when Christy and I got home, we crashed on the couch, kind of tired. We crashed on the couch, and The Hobbit was on TV. The Hobbit. You know, the first of the trilogy, the new movies, The Hobbit was on TV. And that line that I like so much, we turned the TV on, and it was right there. It was at that point in the movie. That line where Lady Galadriel, if you know the story, you know who that is. If you don't, she's the queen of the elves is enough. Lady Galadriel says to Gandalf the Grey, the wizard, why the halfling? Why the hobbit is what she's saying. She's asking this powerful, wise, mature wizard, why bother there? Why the hobbit? And I've said this here before, you may remember it. Gandalf replies, I do not know. Saruman, the other wizard, Saruman believes that it is only great power that can hold evil in check. But that is not what I have found. I have found that it's the small things, everyday acts of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. Simple acts of kindness and love. Why Bilbo Baggins? Perhaps it's because I am afraid and he gives me courage. <laughs> Gets me every time, especially with uh, Shore's uh, orchestral piece running underneath it. But it doesn't really need that, does it? So why gratitude? Why the simple halfling of gratitude? What goodness is there in any of those thank yous that dad drilled in my head in this complex, anxious world? I don't know for sure. But many believe that it is only great power that can hold evil in check. I'm not quite convinced of that. Not 100% convinced anyway. I keep finding that small things, like gathering here on a Sunday morning and seeing your faces, small things like wrestling with Sunday school lessons or Wednesday night Bible studies, Small things, like overhearing that you called a friend who was in the hospital to check on them, or went and visited the funeral home to be with the family. Small things, like spending an afternoon with somebody who's having a rough time. Those things make life a little bit better. Those things keep the darkness at bay. Simple acts of kindness and love. Why gratitude? Why the simple thing from the past? Why count your blessings as my grandmother did so many times? Because I am, and I believe we are, cynical people these days, living in a cynical age. And gratitude may just give us hope. Counting those blessings, naming them one by one, may just tip the scales and give us hope. May it be so. Amen.
in just a moment, we'll sing. In just a moment, we'll stand and you'll be invited to come down to the front and pray. To come down to the front and join this fellowship of grateful people. To come down to the front for whatever need you have. That's the invitation as we now join our voices again in song. have a musical benediction. On our way to that, I invite you to receive this spoken benediction, this spoken good word as we prepare to depart. Depart now in the fellowship of God the Father. And as you go, remember, by the grace of God, you were born into this world. By the strength of God, you have been kept all the day long, even into this very hour. And by the love of God, fully revealed in the face of Jesus, you are being redeemed. Amen. <laughs>